Executive Director of Travel Ministry for EO. Uh, we're thrilled that you're with us here today. If you are joining us for the first time, you will discover that your mics are being muted upon entry. We appreciate that. Uh, if you've been with us before, you know the routine. Uh, we invite everyone to ask questions in the chat row. Uh, our chat rows today are being monitored by uh, Alyssa and Jamie and Mark uh, Boston. So uh, on both here on Zoom and on Facebook Live. So please uh, ask all the questions that you have there. We'll be putting a lot of information there for you uh, today. So thank you for joining. We're going to give everybody a, a couple of seconds to uh, be able to to log in and get caught up with us here. Sometimes it takes just a little bit of time for that to happen. So really appreciate you being with us uh, here today. Hope things are going well wherever in the world that you happen to find yourself today. I'm always astounded uh, to hear where the folks are. And that's one of the great things that we get to talk about here is how many different places that we have been able to be and have folks at as we uh, talk to them around the world, which the marvel of modern technology is just amazing with that. It just fascinates me. Uh, today we have uh, Dr. Peter Walker with us. We'll be talking to him. He is actually uh, in Oberon Miguel right now. We'll, we'll talk with him uh, a little bit later uh, in our interview today in our conversation. Uh, he is, uh, well, I'll, I'll do more introduction with him a little bit later uh, in, just, in just a second. So uh, seeing everybody's coming in now. So uh, once again, we're going to hit, go ahead and get started. Thanks for, for being with us today. So uh, as you know, travel is picking up. Gosh, is it picking up? Uh, it's really exciting to see uh, our first Oberamaga group has left and it's on its way and is traveling currently right now. Uh, so um, first uh, plays have happened. Uh, we're going to talk with, uh, with Dr. Walker about that in a second. But uh, travel is picking up uh, and that's really exciting for all of us uh, to hear. You know, um, I didn't know that it would ever come. I mean, so two years ago, I was so looking forward to going to the Passion Play for the first time, and now I get to do that. So we'll talk about uh, more in a second. Uh, in our time today, uh, James is going to be interviewing uh, Yasser. I uh, get to talk about uh, our journeys to Egypt, and uh, James got some really great stuff there we'll talk about. And if you haven't been to Egypt, that's someplace you need to put on your list, and we'll tell you why you ought to do that. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Peter Walker is with us. He was at the opening night performance of the Passion Play, and uh, we're going to talk with Dr. Walker here in, in just a second, too. And then we're going to cover a lot of ways for you to uh, be able to experience the world uh, before taking your group. We'll talk about all of our familiarization uh, trips. I find myself uh, falling into uh, travel lingo, which you would not have thought I would do after only having been here for the last three years or so, but I find it sort of like church speak. We all have our language, and so I fall into the habit of talking about these as fam trips, and as inevitably somebody say, Tom, what's a fam trip? So a fam trip is a familiarization trip where that we allow people to have an opportunity to go uh, before they take a group uh, so that they can uh, come back and be all excited and tell the group about how wonderful uh, things are going. So we also have James with us. James is back from Europe. James is in the uh, the studio there in Lakeland uh, today. And so, uh, James, good to have you back home, sir. Yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, I'm, I'll be back on the road here pretty pretty soon, but it's good to be home for uh, a couple weeks and um, checking in with everyone here and uh, checking in on progress on different operational fronts. We have a lot going on in a lot of different parts of the world. So, um yeah, busy time. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, I mean, things change so quickly because we were on our uh, sales team call yesterday. We have a, a Monday morning uh, team meeting every Monday morning. And uh, even as we ended that, things changed uh, once again in the Holy Land, correct? They did. Um, we knew that on May 20th that uh, the PCR test that was required at the airport uh, was being removed. Uh, that's actually midnight of the 20th, between the 20th and the 21st. Um, so that that we knew and, and things, but they sort of slid in that, okay, we're no longer requiring any testing. 
um, to be required before you leave to go to Israel. So no longer do we have to do a antigen or PCR test here in the United States or really from any other foreign country. I know Dr. Walker's uh, usually bring folks from England. Um, so they've lifted that requirement as well as of midnight 20th, 21st. So that, that was a surprise. I, it actually came in the sales meeting. I was like, I can't believe that. Um, so I had to go do, do some research, but sure enough, that's, that is the policy as of now. So that's, that really saves a lot of headaches. I mean, everyone trying to calculate 24 hours before flight time, you know, that, that's, it, it was tough. So I, no one's sorry to see that one go. If, um, the United States would remove ours, then we would have no testing at all. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully that was ex- we'll, we'll join that bandwagon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was exciting to to hear when they change that. So now there's really no vaccine requirement and no testing requirement to go to the Holy Land. Right. And, and so, there's no, of course, that that mandatory quarantine isn't, uh, you know, isn't in effect. So, um, you know, theoretically, you could stop and do sightseeing now leaving the airport. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's, that's exciting. And we're really, 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 uh, pumped up to hear about that. And so, uh, as I mentioned, we have a special guest with us. We have uh, Dr. Peter Walker here with us today. Uh, Dr. Walker, uh, some of you have probably seen his work before. You, he's been on a, a webinar with us once before, but just to remind you, he is uh, the author of Immersed in the Passion, uh, a book that all of our Oberon McGow guests will receive. Uh, we're doing that. He's a, been a longtime guest speaker with us here at EO. Um, he did his doctoral research uh, investigating how first Christians understood the significance of Jerusalem uh, from the time of the apostles to the Byzantine era in the fourth century. And so uh, that sounds pretty, uh, I need to talk to you about that sometime. That sounds pretty exciting, Dr. Walker. Well, I spent seven years of my <laughs> life doing it. Very, very, very boring, I can tell you. So uh, <laughs> very, very sad. Oh, gosh. Uh, well, most of our doctoral programs uh, and thesis, is, it seems, we're the only ones interested in them. I remember writing, you know, I said, okay, uh, I, I love this, but nobody else wanted to talk to me about it. So, but you, you've been to previous Passion Plays. Gosh, uh, how, how many have you been to through the years? I was able to uh, lead a, a tour from London uh, in 2000 and then again in 2010. I uh, had my family with me in 2000 and my, my mother and my mother-in-law. So it's a great family event, but it's lovely to be back now for the third season and I was able to do a little research visit uh, for the book that uh, EO uh, has uh, there uh, in August 2019. So this is my fourth uh, year being in Obramgan. It's great to be back. Great. So now you were op- opening weekend, correct? If, uh, this past Well, that's right. It was a great privilege. I came up from Greece on Friday and uh, was able to go to the premiere on um, Saturday night. And then the first kind of paying public performance, I believe, was on Sunday. And tonight, I'll be able to go back to the, the, the evening session of the, the third performance. It was great to be there on Saturday, I can assure you. Yeah. So now you're, go- you're going to the evening session because it's broken up, right? That's right. It, it starts at 2.30 in the afternoon for two and a half hours. I would have gone this afternoon, but I needed to be with you. Um, so, um, and then uh, then you have a break from five till, uh, let me get this right, is it 7.30? Uh, anyway, eight o'clock. And then, um, yes, eight o'clock. And then um, it went on for two and three quarters of an hour. We didn't leave until quarter to 11, um, 10.45 on, on Saturday night, uh, which surprised some of the people collecting us that the, the play had gone on quite so long. I don't know if it was a particularly slow version or whether that's going to be true for the whole season. <laughs> Yeah, well, you get to, but you're having dinner with Mary Magdalene. Is that what you said? Well, that's right. I'm hoping to meet Mary Magdalene at 5.30 uh, when I leave uh, this call. And Mary Magdalene is the person who um, I interviewed in the book because she played the role of Mary Magdalene in 1984, 1990, and 2000. And it was my joy to interview her and to try and uh, help her to express in English what it meant to, to play that role as a woman in relationship to, to Jesus. And it was a very touching interview that I had with her. I'm looking forward to seeing her again very much. Right. So opening night, what, what were you, you've been several times, what were your expectations going into opening night this time? Well, I suppose everyone's expectation was just, just really wanting it to get started. And uh, when they said at the beginning, uh, please uh, uh, turn your mobile phones off or put them on airplane mode, you, you could suddenly, there's a real kind of sense of hush and expectation. 
and almost sheer uh, relief as, it's, as, as the music got started. Um, I suppose our expectation was for everything that we, we eventually got, which was great music, very good singing, um, dramatic action, and no one can really improve on the arrival of Jesus on the stage on a donkey. Uh, it's iconic, it's powerful, it's a spectacle, and you've got a, a thousand people on the stage. It's just an incredible thing with mothers and children with their babes in arms. It's, it's, it's a great thing. It gets the thing off to an incredible start and it only gets better. So a thousand people on the stage at one time. Well, that's what they, uh, they have said. I didn't say, well, I didn't actually count them, but it looked pretty, <laughs> it looked pretty crowded. Um, there was that they were using quite a few animals as well, not just Jesus on a donkey, but there were uh, several Roman soldiers on horseback. And then later in the second half, we had some camels as well uh, coming on with uh, Herod, which was an amusing uh, thing as well. There were some protesters uh, against the idea of animals are not an actors uh, who were placarding at, outside protesting against this but i don't think anyone took them too too seriously <laughs> so so what are some of the biggest changes you've noticed uh compared to previous years Dr. well in one sense it's hard to be too specific there because you you, you remember the thing in general rather than in particular detail um I, I think the, the, the Pontius Pilate uh, interrogation went on for a longer, seemed to be a bit more detailed. Uh, I did notice that Pontius Pilate came on in um, the first half and put pressure on Caiaphas in a way which I don't think had happened before, which kind of made Caiaphas look as though he was subject to lots of pressures from outside. And he was also being accused by Anas, his father-in-law, um, of being a bit of a ditherer. So that was an interesting uh, angle, um, which I, I noticed is different. Um, I think you'll find that it's Jesus who uh, kisses Judas, not the other way around. So watch out for that one uh, to see um, if that's what, precisely what happened. But uh, I almost missed it, but I think that's what happened. And uh, so uh, otherwise, it, it, it's falling into the normal way of doing things. Uh, I was following the English text in quite a lot of detail. Um, and I noticed a few things which su surprised me, but um, by and large, um, most of that, the, the normal audience watching in uh, as English speakers wouldn't, wouldn't notice and, and I wouldn't be too bothered about. So, so these changes that you noticed, were they something that uh, Christian Stuckel had made uh, to help the audience appreciate uh, the story better? Or were there other changes that you would attribute to that? Yeah, obviously, presumably Christian has had the, the final word on this. I interviewed him, as you know, three years ago for the book and uh, could sense some of his angle on things. Um, in one sense, there's a, there's a limited amount that you can actually really change in the Jesus story. Um, but he is clearly being made, to, as, is, as is true, to be you know, a friend of the poor against uh, violence. Um, uh, but you can't sort of change the script too much in a sense. Um, uh, one thing that I did notice that it, uh, in the Last Supper, uh, the, 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 the wording, this is my body, this is my blood, was just was not present, which uh, I think will, will cause a bit of a shock to some of the German uh, watchers who obviously know that's the most important thing in the, in the Last Supper, if you like, from a Christian church's point of view. And uh, those words were omitted. They did the Lord's Prayer at that point, but they, they used a, a non-liturgical version of it uh, as a kind of grace over the L Last Supper. Uh, and the Germans I spoke to said that was interesting because they were, it was clearly the Lord's Prayer, but they weren't using the words, that, the version they normally use in church. So I think they were doing some creative things. There's lovely, they sing some Hebrew uh, uh, and uh, they put the... Um, the talit over their heads and pray in Hebrew uh, it to fill the temple with um, uh, with with praise and that's a very nice touch. You mentioned it, Taylor, the the costumes, the authenticity period, authenticity. What's your takeaway on that? Yes, the costumes I think were, were very different this year. Uh, when I uh, again I chatted three years ago about this to uh, Mary Magdalene, she said it's likely that they're going to be much um, softer, more muted. And indeed they were. So the majority of the costumes from the first century were um, grey and pale, uh, nothing particularly colourful. The most colourful thing was Jesus's red robe, um, which made it slightly difficult sometimes to distinguish between who was who on a big stage. But com compare that with 20 years ago when they were wearing big sort of triangular 
headgear and the Caiaphas came on with an extra two foot on top of his head. Um, all of that has gone. Someone said to me, well, they were using Jewish kippahs uh, and surely that was that wouldn't have been true at the time because they would have had their, their headgear. So um, that was interesting. Um, yeah, so the costume is quite different. And also the... Um, the, uh, as you may know, they have uh, these um, set silent pieces when you just see the actors standing still portraying a passage from the Old Testament like Moses before Pharaoh. And um, again, the colours there were more muted than the, the very bright colours which they used, um, I believe, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, I forget which. So um, in a sense, the colours are slightly less uh, uh, exciting, but are probably a little bit more authentic and making it not feel so theatrical and artificially hyped up, if you like. Hmm. Very interesting if they would, would do that. That sounds, I, I like that actually. I think that's pretty cool. So, mm. Mm. How, how was the gospel, uh, Dr. Walker, you f feel portrayed in this version versus the previous years? Um, the, the main gospel story can't be changed in a sense, um, and therefore a few bits of wording change even in the German uh, is, is not going to affect the overall story. I suppose the, um, the, 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 the issue of the resurrection is always a key thing uh, in any passion play, and it's always the most difficult thing because how do you put it on stage without it looking artificial or just a, a kind of add-on? Um, so, uh, like 10 years ago, they don't have Jesus physically coming back onto the stage. Instead, they have the, a, a, a bowl with uh, some fire in it, a fire pit, uh, by which the angel is standing and spreads that light around. And Mary Magdalene uh, has this vision of Christ and then uh, speaks forth her faith. Um, so, uh, the, the watcher can take it either as a kind of... Um, uh, uh, spiritual ending or can in, put into that the historic orthodox perspective of, of being a physical resurrection. Uh, and that's left for the, uh, the, the, the the watcher, the audience to construe as they want to. I think it was done, done well. And to be honest, after waiting for three or four years for this production, I think all the, uh, everybody was just so pleased to get to a moment of celebration at the end after crucifixion. So we were just uh, very pleased to hear the words hallelujah. And we went out on a real bang. Um, they they, they, they uh, clapped for five or six minutes afterwards. And of course the, the, con the, sorry, the actors don't come back onto the stage. So you're, you're, you're not getting an encore, but you just, you just need to express your appreciation. And after years of waiting, uh, the mainly German audience I was with on, on um, Saturday, we're, we're clearly expressing their appreciation. So you must come soon and see see it for yourself. Yes, yes. Well, I, I plan to be there. Uh, I'm leaving Monday, uh, so I'm headed that way very quickly. Yeah, great. So, uh, so beyond reading your book, what should I and and other folks who are coming for the first time, or maybe for the second or third time even, uh, what what tips would you share with us to get ready to experience the play? Oh, so they're very naughty point. Do bring an umbrella just in case you need it. And uh, I, I wouldn't say, um, I, I'd encourage you not to read the text um, too much and, and enjoy it. You know the basic, basic story uh, and watch it. You can always look at the text afterwards. Um, and uh, But I would encourage you, perhaps, if you've got the copy of Immersed in the Passion, the most useful thing to read beforehand uh, apart from the interviews, which I rather like, and I think they're the best bit of the book, but the, the actual descriptions of the Old Testament um, sections, um, portraits, I think that would be useful just to read the night before, uh, just to remind yourself what, what's the Old Testament link with the New Testament, because you're certainly not going to be reading that when you're watching it. You've got one minute to watch them, and you want to enjoy them uh, with a bit of knowledge. Yeah. I don't know if um, Shelby or Ryan have got any video clip they wanted to show. Maybe there's not time for that, but I know they, they did have a video clip that I, I did. Uh, we have something coming up right now. Yeah, so tell us what we're seeing here, Dr. Walker. Well, that's the main street. And here's a, an interesting figure making his way into the, the play. And uh, we just got some pictures there of the... Um, and people gathering, uh, queuing up. There's new security, I should say. You can only take a small bag in with you, and, that, and that's fine. Um, but this is just uh, uh, looking out on the fields from by the, by the Passion Play. So all of this to enjoy. And that's the, the view of the Passion Theatre um, from the new security. 
you go into your gates, uh, letter E is fairly far back. Here we are in the crowd, uh, not allowed to film during the actual performance, but you can see the assembled gathering there um, and uh, looking at the, at the stage. It's a great set. They haven't changed the set too much. I thought they were going to change it, um, but uh, it's still the historic set that they, they were using. Great. So, well, well, you know, James, you got to be there for dress rehearsal. So maybe yeah. you and Mike Walker can share a little bit about what the differences were. Well, I, I, I mean, Peter, I had a couple of questions for you here. Uh, one, I'm, did it strike you there was a little more diversity amongst the cast? this time um and then i know there were some turkish uh germans performing because there are quite a few turkish people i don't know if that's the kind of diversity you're referring to yeah it, it seemed I, I i think judas is actually turk is a is a turkish resident now i i've if I'm not mistaken, reading one of the two two actors. Who played yes, him. I don't think he was performing on the premiere night, but I had met him three years ago. That, that's right. So um, I believe there are several um, people of Turkish origin who are in in the play. Yeah, yeah. And and the other thing which struck me at dress rehearsal, I I mean, to me it seemed like Jesus was a little bit more animated this time. Did you get that sense too? That's very interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, well, again, I don't know if you saw. Did you see Frederick Myatt as Jesus or, or the other one? No, um, I, I saw that. I saw. I did not see Frederick Frederick at the dress rehearsal. It was the other fellow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm interesting to see. Um, I, I I still felt that Fred wasn't quite so animated, and uh, I think Jesus. Uh, uh, my impression was Jesus was still kind of speaking out these great truths, but it was slightly difficult to sort of see him as a. Um, I don't know, a, a gutsy kind of person, if you like, but maybe the other actors put a bit more oomph into it and you'll have to see which, which actor you get. Um, it, was, it was a very good portrait, but I didn't find animated wasn't the word that I, I would have gone for. Mm. Yeah, yeah the, the understudy was, uh, there are a couple of places where I, I, it just really struck me as I hadn't really viewed the, the text that way, the way it was portrayed. So I was, I was yeah. just curious what you, what you had found. Yeah, well, I'll see what happens tonight and see if it's see if it's any different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Peter, we we appreciate you coming. I everyone, if you haven't seen the book, uh, this is Peter's book. Everyone traveling with us to the Passion Play uh, this summer is receiving a copy of the book, and we really appreciate Peter and all the work that you did to you know in preparing this book. It, it's a fantastic uh, resource uh, for us, and we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. And I'll go off now and meet Mary Magdalene. Bye for now and have a good rest of webinar together. Bye for now. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Bye -bye. Peter. Okay. Um, uh, we appreciate Peter for joining us. And uh, next we're going we're gonna to transition here into uh, my interview with uh, Yasser Zaid. Tom, we're, we're sort of striking out here this month uh, with our, <laughs> with our, uh, our guest. Uh, Yasser is supposed to be here with us in studio today, but he was stuck in thunderstorms last night in New York. So, uh, so we filmed a, an interview earlier this morning uh, with him. But before we do that, we want to go to the uh, our our trailer for our Nile Cruise uh, programs. <laughs> Okay, and as I said, we were joined by Yasser uh, Zaid uh, earlier this morning, uh, so we will play uh, that interview now. I I'm joined now by Yasser Zaid, our uh, office manager uh, in Cairo, and uh, always good to be with uh, Yasser. Yasser and I have worked with each other for 30 years. He he's actually worked with EO a little bit longer, but he and I have worked together for 30 years. So. Uh, it is always good to spend time with Yasser, and we've traveled many places in the world uh, together. So, um, Yasser, we, we appreciate all you do for our EO guests. Thank you, sir. It's always my pleasure to be with you. I, I consider myself one of my EO staff. I've been working for a long time, 
and I'd love to be with all of you anytime, any place in the world. Thank you, sir. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to share it with you today. Yeah. Um, Yasser, how's it, how's it going in Egypt? I, I get the sense uh, from some of your communication to us that it's, it's getting busier and busier uh, in Egypt again. Correct. Since last September, when the door opens, all the doors are open in Egypt, uh, it's became like overbooking everywhere on the night cruises, uh, Sharm el the resorts, the hotels, everywhere it's coming from all over the world. Especially the Americans, they start in last October. You can, if you can go to any place, any major hotels, the big hotels, you can find a lot of Americans and a lot of Latin American as well. Resorts, the, the, the American usually didn't go to the resorts on the Red Sea, but they're doing a lot of Cairo, Sinai, and night cruises. But really, it's, it's, it's still continuing, even in the summer. Usually, the summer is a little bit quiet, but still, we have a lot of reservation, even with the EO. It's very good. We have uh, June and July, we still continue. Usually, it's getting quiet after April. Thanks for that. Well, that's fantastic. Fantastic news. So, you all have pretty much passed the COVID uh, uh, concerns and everything's functionally normally. Are, are things like masks still required or everything's back to normal? I can say we suddenly back to normal. We saw that it's never, the COVID never ends. But suddenly, it's nothing at all. And the people, uh, even not, all, not only the Egyptian, even the foreigners, the tourists, they, they, they feel free everywhere. Uh, some, some places, they still require the mask, but it's, uh, it's like a routine. When you go to the, uh, like a museum, any indoor place, they need to wear a mask. But it's as a COVID on the streets and everywhere, nobody wearing a mask, and the people, Right, the, the life is running as before, exactly. And nobody have any fear from the COVID anymore. Well, that's good news. I, I mean, life running as normal in Cairo is probably not normal anywhere else in the world. It's uh, really a unique place uh, to visit uh, there. Um, you know, the thing that always impresses me when I come to Egypt, and I've been to Egypt many times, as you know, uh, is just the history uh, and, and even the biblical history. Um, you know, the, the history goes back, what, five, six millennia. Um, but the biblical history, uh, you know, you have Joseph, you have Moses, you have Jeremiah, you have uh, the Holy Family coming down there when Christ was a child. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about that and why a Christian should come to Egypt. As Paul, we have the father of the fathers, Abraham. Abraham was in Egypt and he married from Egypt. And oh, continuously, right. about yeah, yeah. Uh, Abraham, because Abraham he married from Egypt, and he got the the, the, the other uh, the land of Joseph. Uh, we we consider as a land of Joseph. We consider that we are a part of the Holy Lands because it's whatever you just name uh, as uh, Joseph, uh, Moses, Moses, he didn't go to the Holy Land, but he raised and uh, travel in whole Egypt. From, from Egypt and he want to go to the Holy Land, but he didn't. I mean, uh, Egypt, it's always uh, have a hug for everybody. We have a safe place. The people are warm, the hospitality. I'm sure you, you feel it when you go to Egypt in the, in the street, the people, they like the foreigners. They like to host them. They like to, uh, whatever they ask for, they, they do. So even the Jesus, when he gave with, with, uh, with our mother Mary to Egypt, they came, they, they, they escaped from the Holy Land to come to Egypt. And the Egyptian, they, they wanted to have them everywhere in, in Cairo. And they started to come from Sinai, and then from Sinai to Cairo. And even when they go to Upper Egypt, whenever, whenever they go, they want to stay because the Egyptians are warm enough to hug them and to be around with them. It's the same thing with the Joseph. When the Joseph came to Egypt and he invited his brothers, you know, the, we know everybody know the story, they, they came to Egypt and he became the kingdom of Egypt. So the, the, the Egyptian didn't consider who you are. You, we consider you are a human being, you come to our lands and our lands will hug you. It, it's always a very warm welcome in Egypt. I, I will definitely uh, agree with that. 
Um, thinking about some of the activities that our guests do on our typical uh, visits to Egypt, what are your favorites and what do you, what do you think our guests like the most? Uh, from my experience, the most of the people, they have, they have a highlight when they go to the Nile cruise, especially Luxor and Aswan. Even the people that didn't go to the Nile cruise, they go only for Luxor, they love to stay for a like night or two nights. Last week, I have one of the very famous uh, fr uh, friends, Bobby Morris, he was in Egypt and he stayed two nights in Luxor. They were very happy. And he is a re our repeated clients. Not only him, but many others, when they, they go to Luxor, they really like the place. My cruise, it's, uh, it's it, it cannot find something similar, even in the river cruises in Europe, it's different than the, the Nile River cruise. So the Nile cruise be the highlights, Luxor and Aswan. And then when they go to the people, to Cairo and to see the pyramids. So they, this is the place everyone dreamed to go one day. But be impressed with the, the love to stay longer on Luxor and the Nile Cruise. I, and, and the Nile Cruise is wonderful. And I, I, if you haven't done that, I mean, even down in Aswan, there is biblical history uh, there. So I, that's, that's more than we have time to get into today, Yasser. But uh, uh, any of you are interested in that, uh, you, will, you will learn a lot more about uh, the Bible and the and the temple in Jerusalem uh, in Aswan. It's 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 fascinating. Um, Yasser, one one place you didn't mention, which I thought you would, you know, I always like the Bedouin dinner at at St. Catherine's. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this is this is the the the, first, the usually it could be the second night after the crossing from the, from the Holy Land. They go to Egypt. They spend the night. I, I, I think I, I sent you before like a videos of the, how the people are really enjoyed because we cook the foods underneath first of all, and then we dig in the, the ground and take the food from underneath and we give them the, a real uh, Bedouin style dinner and they're sitting in the tents, open air. And in the meantime, beside the Bedouin food, we have a buffet for the regular food as well. But the people really like, like it, and they have the, the uh, they go with the Bedouin, and they are doing the um, the fire together, and they're doing the bread, fresh bread, and the coffee and tea on the fire. And the people they want to go out from the tents. Usually, it takes like forty five minutes for dinner, and sometimes they go to spend like two three hours. Usually, like that. But yeah. really, the people the people love it. It's it's a wonderful experience. Better when hospitality is is fantastic, and, and really just being out in the desert at night. It's if you walk a little bit away from that camp, you I mean the stars are just unbelievable. So uh, fantastic experience. I you know another fantastic experience that we keep waiting for is the Grand Egyptian Grand Museum. Museum. <laughs> a, a, any update on when that's opening? Uh, from my connections, uh, I it's not officially yet. But from my connections, I hear that's 4th of November, it will be the opening. Okay. Fourth Actually, the museum are already. You remember two years ago, you were there with, uh, with our friend, Pastor Adam, and uh, very close friends. And the, the museum, two years ago, we were, were ready. And because of the COVID, we postponed. And after that, after the COVID, because they wanted to maintain all the area around the museum. That's why we have we have a shortage of the hotels now in Giza because Meridian Hotel is closed, Pyramids Park are closed, Mercury Hotel are closed. So they wanted to renovate all the area around the Grand Museum before they open the museum. So they are working hard now in the area and they're trying to do the underground metro, the subway, to reach from downtown to the Grand Museum. So they are working hard, like 24 hours. But at the museum itself, is ready, but the environments around the museum takes a little bit of time. But I hear it by November fourth, they're going to open it. Well, that'll be fantastic. I, I can't wait to see that. I, I've, we went. You got us to go behind the scenes there to see some of King Tut's treasures that day. To and not the really whole group, the whole the whole group of the uh, yeah, King Tut. Yeah, yeah. So it um, yeah, that that was amazing. 
so I, I just can't wait to see the full exhibit there. So that's it's good news if it's if it's if it's definitely opening this fall. Uh, that'll be exciting uh, yeah. for everyone. Well, Yasser, I, I appreciate your time today, and uh, I'm sorry you couldn't be with us here live uh, in the studio. Um, I, I'm very sorry also, but, uh, yeah. you know, so, the situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, the weather in New York last night wasn't too cooperative. So we will, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you later this afternoon when you get here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that interview with uh, Yasser Zaid and uh, Tom, he had a lot of exciting things to share. He, he did. You know, James, it's uh, really exciting. I, I loved our trip to Egypt, and and my wife, Kathy, says that's probably one of her favorite uh, things that we've ever done, the Nile River cruise. It, it is so awesome to just to be there and, and to do that. Uh, just, I don't know I can describe it. Uh, uh, I've done a lot of different things, but that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Well, the biblical themes, I, you know, of Egypt being a refuge place, a bondage place, and, you know, even Elijah and Paul sort of going down somewhere down that direction, you know, as a sort of a soul-searching uh, place, uh, it, those, those themes are very prevalent uh, throughout the Bible. You don't necessarily realize that, um, but uh, so I, I just enjoy all the history there. Yeah, I mean, and... I guess I was kind of shocked when, you know, the guide shared that, uh, you know, you know, Jesus could have seen the pyramids and I had never thought about that as a, a child, an infant, that, that, uh, you know, and the influence on Moses and, uh, and it was just, it was, it was eye opening. And I tell people now that if you want to talk about the old Testament, uh, you, you've got to go to Egypt first. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It was one of my great, great, great things. So I really, love, really appreciate the opportunity to go and, and to be there. And like you, I want to see the gym when it opens. Yeah, oh, that's going to be, that's really going to be fantastic. It's, it's what, five, ten times larger than the Louvre. So it's, that is, it's, and having walked around there when it was in construction, it, it's massive. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, and, and that view from the gym to the pyramids, I mean, gosh, it looks pretty awesome with, you know, all the, Sphinxes there and stuff that looks pretty cool. Yeah, we want you to be able to go. Uh, we, we've got the Splendors of Egypt trip uh, that's that's uh, available to you, uh, James. I don't know about you, but generally I remember Valentine's Day when my sons, one of them calls and said, "What do you get mom for Valentine's Day, Dad?" Uh, go now. Uh, so we, we've taken care of that for you for this Valentine's Day, 2023. Uh, you can go to Egypt. Uh, that's departs on Valentine's Day. Isn't that very thoughtful uh, of us? I mean, uh, James and I were looking out for you. So uh, we'd encourage you to do that. Or uh, maybe if that doesn't fit your schedule, then October to get ready to start, you know, before Thanksgiving and before uh, Christmas to get in the mood for uh, what's upcoming, a surprise gift there of a trip to Egypt. Uh, uh, so the Splendors of Egypt trip, it's 11 days, uh, February the 13th or October the 31st. Uh, you go to Cairo, uh, Day, a daytime there at Trip and Try, a three-day Nile cruise uh, that you get the biblical area that James and I have been talking about. Uh, visit St. Catharines. Uh, you know, you go to the Temple of Horus and Luxor, the Valley of the Kings and Queens, um, and even through in some time to relax at the Red Sea. Uh, you may remember the Red Sea, the little bit it played there in the Exodus, and uh, it was known in the biblical uh sense for that, but better known today for its uh, world-class coral reefs. And so, uh, you know, take an opportunity to go uh, go to Egypt and, and see what all Yasser was talking about. And Yasser will greet you with that famous Egyptian hospitality and embrace you, and uh, you'll feel like you're coming home uh, there too. Uh, we have a fam trip, a familiarization trip, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for folks who haven't been, it would like to go and uh, get ready to come back and share with some of your folks. You can see that uh, now on your screen. Uh, that's going to be May the 16th of 23. So I uh, would encourage you to, to take that. It, it's not quite as extent, uh, extensive in its coverage as, as the uh, Splendors of Egypt trip, but it will give you a great opportunity to get a taste of Egypt uh, and a desire to, to go back and do more. Uh, so, James, you've been, you've been on the Nile River cruise. You've been to Luxor. Tell what, what do you like about those places? 
You know, I, I tell people the only like picture I have in my house of, of a location is is actually the temple of Luxor in Luxor. Uh, it's on a papyrus. I got it framed, and that's that's. I mean, we got a lot of pictures of family and all that stuff, but of one location, that's it. There's something about sitting in Luxor and watching the Nile River go by. That's uh, it's something you don't you can't experience anywhere else in the world. I, it's very hard to describe, but uh, you know that and the just the history of all the places and, and the, as Yasser said, the people were very very friendly. Um, so it's it's really a unique. Uh, experience and it's something that you know just in the last four or five years we actually have started offering just Egypt only programs so um, just to exploit the richness richness of that uh, we have a we have actually have a book for Egypt uh, Dr. Walker didn't write it but uh, uh, Adam Hamilton did and uh, he did a great job there too so uh, just trying to tie all those pieces together those biblical themes great so well you know as I said, Kathy loved the, the Nile River cruise. Uh, and I saw somebody pop up on the, the chat there ask if that was on AMA. It's now, not. We, yeah, no, we it? use um, uh, very nice. We, we've, we've done Nile cruises uh, literally for 30 years. All 30 years I've been uh, actively working here at EO, we've offered Nile cruise programs. So AMA just really started that, what, a year ago? Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some great ships, some all sweet ships. Uh, Yasser does a good job looking at them. I, I go down every once in a while to check out the ships. So we use uh, Moven Pick, uh, some Nesta lines, um, you know, some uh, some you know cruise lines that have worked with us for many many years. And I, I think we do, do really deliver. When you start comparing prices, we really really deliver a tremendous value for what. Uh, what we offer on the Nile cruise. And I think that's just because we've, we've been doing it for so long and uh, we appreciate uh, Yasser and his team support there. You know, we, we've got a great team in Luxor, Nubi uh, heads that up and, you know, Nubi will do anything for you. So um, uh, really great folks uh, in Egypt. I, I just enjoy working with them so much. Uh, and they, they look after our guests tremendously. Yeah, Nubi had a fresh squeezed juice every day for our bus when we were there. Uh, it was pretty amazing. It was fun. Uh, you know, and we were on one of the all sweet ships, which was pretty awesome too. So, but you don't have to do just the, the Egypt only. We have uh, extensions right out of the Holy Land. We do have extensions. Um, uh, we offer extensions here. I think we, we have a slide for you to see. Uh, to Cairo, the Nile cruise and uh, uh, Luxor on... Um, uh, one of our Holy Land via Jordan programs. So we have Cairo, uh, Cairo in the route of the Exodus uh, on the screen now, which uh, starts in Jerusalem. You, you journey down to the Taba border, which is near Alat. So you uh, travel south uh, to the very tip of Israel and then cross over uh, into the Sinai Peninsula there and uh, visit St. Catherine's Monastery. The next day, uh, typically in the winter, we, we stay at uh, stay near the border because it's just warmer. St. Catharines is a very high elevation, so uh, it, it's pretty chilly there January and February. Um, and then uh, we do the route of the Exodus uh, back through the Sinai to Cairo and uh, follow that up with uh, just some of the many things to see in Cairo uh, from the Great Pyramids of Sphinx out to uh, Memphis, Saqqara, Joseph's Lake, and then uh, a couple of the, the bazaar in Cairo, uh, some, of, some of the more contemporary things. Again, Egypt's history is so long, so um, I, I suppose anything built since Christ's time is pretty contemporary. Uh, but uh, it, very interesting there. And then our Nile cruise program combines um, the Sinai, but then also then the cruise and then finishes up in Cairo. Uh, as you see there, it's one of the Nile cruise ships uh, you see on the screen. Luxor and Karnak, I just really can't be missed. There are highlights, uh, the temples there. The Temple of Karnak is the largest religious uh, set of buildings in the world. Uh, it's that expansive. And, and then, of course, the Valley of the Kings and Queens, uh, not to be missed on the other side of the river, uh, where so many of the treasures in the great Grand Egyptian Museum uh, were found originally. Uh, so we'll do that. We go back to Cairo, hit, hit all the highlights in Cairo, and then come home uh, on the extension. So these are extensions from Holy Land programs. Um, 
uh, that uh, uh, that are a great way. If you're if you're going all the way to the Middle East uh, it, and you have the time and you have the resources, it's it's a great way to round out your experience uh, in the Holy Land. Um, and then uh, we we also have a Luxor extension uh, to uh, some of our various programs there um, uh, that uh, you can also participate in. So, and I believe we have now a just uh, one more trailer here for uh, uh, for our Cairo visits. Good. Well, Tom, so James, uh, we, 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 we talked, sorry. talked a lot about Egypt today. We did talk a lot about Egypt today, and that's great because we need uh, folks to experience that. It's such a great place. Somebody asked a question on the chat roll there. Uh, at the gym, how long will people have when the gym opens? And that's including on the itinerary to visit the gym. Uh, do you have any idea on that? Yeah, that's uh, it, it's a very good question, uh, and it's one um, as we get closer to that time, we're, we're, we're going to sit down and assess that uh, when Yasser comes this afternoon and talk about that. There are four sections to the gym. I can't remember what all four are, but we figure one whole section of the four is just dedicated to all of King Tut's things. Everything that was, that was found by Howard Carter uh, back, I think it was in the 20s, uh, everything will be on display. So. The old museum, which you got a glimpse of in that uh, uh, in the trailer, um, you know, couldn't hope to even display a fraction of it. So now everything's going to be on display. All the stuff that's been sort of sitting back in the storehouses is going to be out. So for sure, we're going to give people time to do that. Um, and then I, I, it seems like we're going to we're going to focus on one of the other sections that fo I th focuses more on the biblical history. Uh, so my anticipation is probably going to be a half day visit uh, there to the uh, to the gym. Okay, great, great. Well, uh, as, as massive as it looks, when I got to drive by it, I mean, uh, it looks like it's going to be you know you could spend a couple of weeks wandering around inside and and just uh, making notes and and pondering on the beauty of it all. So, but look forward to that. You know, uh, we got so caught up James and talking. I forgot to, to throw in the splendors of Egypt uh, uh, video that, that, that the team had prepared for us. So let's, let's drop that in before I jump over to the fam trips. Okay, guys? Okay. Wonder at the splendors of Egypt on this 11 day journey of a lifetime presented by Educational Opportunities Tours. Walk along the footsteps of Moses, Joseph, and the Holy Family as you witness the pyramids of Saqqara and Giza and explore many of Egypt's treasures at the Museum of Egyptian Antiquities. Then sail along the Nile aboard a luxurious river cruise ship. Explore the ruins of ancient Egypt's temples and mausoleums, some of which the Israelites might have built. Aswan, Kamambo, Karnak, and more will leave you speechless as you gaze at their scale and grandeur. Think of the manual labor needed to build such magnificent structures. Time permitting, explore the Temple of Luxor and imagine how it appeared lit by fire against the night sky or what it was like to take part in a funeral procession. Even the Patriarch Joseph could have been honored in the Valley of the Kings and Queens where so many Egyptian rulers were laid to rest. Head east just as Moses did at St. Catherine's Monastery, ponder the miracle of the burning bush, hike on Mount Sinai, and meditate on Moses receiving the Ten Commandments. Then enjoy a traditional Bedouin dinner. Relax on the shores of the Red Sea at Sharm el Sheikh and imagine the water separating as the Israelites crossed over on dry ground. 
return to some of the earliest stories of the Bible when you discover the splendors of Egypt with Educational Opportunities Tours. Learn more and book your journey of a lifetime by contacting your local tour host or through EO Tours at 800-247-0017 or at www.eo.travel. You know, James, we talked about uh, river cruising and, and the Nile cruise. Uh, so let's start off with a conversation with uh, the Danube fam. Uh, we've got a, a special fam there that we've opened up for folks. And uh, um, the slide will be up there for you in just a second, I believe. But uh, we have multiple departure dates on that one if you've uh, not had a chance to go. Um, you're going to be on that one on the 6th of June, I believe. Yeah, we are sailing on the 6th of June, so I will see the Passion Play on the night of the 5th, and then I will go with our first fam trip on the 6th. We are uh, embarking in Vilshoven, so we still have a few empty cabins there, and uh, anyone who can make a quick decision, you can join us in a couple weeks. Yeah, and that's a great price that starts out $9.98, uh, folks, so if you haven't uh, been on a river cruise, this is a good way to get a uh, familiarization trip on a river cruise and get to do that. You will not be disappointed. Uh, trust me uh, on that. Uh, we have our Jesus walking uh, fam, our Jesus trail trip that's coming up. Uh, that's in September. Uh, we are looking forward for you to sign up for that. Uh, everybody who has done that talks about how wonderful it is. Uh, I won't be joining you on that fam. Uh, we'll let somebody who likes to walk join you on that fam. Uh, so we Hope you'll do that. We'll follow it up with the Camino. Uh, many of you have heard about that. It's got a Portugal pre-tour. Um, beautiful scenery. Gosh, I can't wait. Uh, I've not been to Portugal yet. That's one of my places I, I really look forward to, uh, to traveling. So you can, can see the information there. Uh, you can, can make that, that journey with us. Sign up uh, today. We're going to have to make some decisions on that one uh, pretty quickly. We got our England and Wesley fam. We get a lot of requests for that, and I was just at a uh, a conference last weekend, and I, that was the very first thing that disappeared were all the England and Wesley fam uh, brochures. So, if you've not done this one yet, uh, you know some great places there, the new room and stuff that you'll love seeing. Uh, going to Oxford, uh, Wesley's London, uh, so and then just free time in London. So, hope that you'll make that that trip with us. Uh, Greece remains a popular destination for us, so we're going to take folks back to Greece, uh, uh, going into Thessaloniki, uh, Philippi, uh, just some beautiful places there. Uh, uh, Meteora, uh, I, just, I love seeing the monasteries there, James Ayer. That, that's really spectacular. Yeah, absolutely, Tom. Yeah, and, uh, and, then, and then one that we've not ever done before, as far as I know, have we, James, a Spain and Portugal fam trip. No, we have not done that before. So it's, uh, um, I was recently in Madrid and uh, um, yeah, it, it, that's, it's a gorgeous city and, and Portugal is a gorgeous country. Uh, we only have 10 rooms there. So we're gonna limit that to the first 20 people who sign up. So uh, if you haven't done that yet, you need to, to do that. Uh, we're going to Turkey uh, right after Greece uh, and Spain and Portugal on the 8th of November. So you can see that there, you will, you'll love that if you've not been to Turkey, you wanna get there and come back and take a, a group. I was telling people, as I said, um, for me, Egypt uh, is the Old Testament, life and times of Jesus and the gospel is the Holy Land. Uh, but if you want the infant church, the cradle of Christianity, uh, that's Turkey. Uh, and so uh, I would encourage you to, to, to take that trip. Uh, First ever time we're doing a FAM to Jordan, is that correct? It is the first time we're doing a FAM to Jordan. I mean, I think back in the 80s, our Holy Land FAM trips went via Jordan on Royal Jordanian, um, but we've never done just a, a Jordan only FAM trip. Yeah, and so this has got some really cool, uh, really co cool stuff. Jarash is one of my favorite places. I love to go uh, to Jarash. I, I think it rivals Ephesus in so many ways. Of course, Petra, uh, Kathy will watch that Indiana Jones movie just to see Petra. I mean, she loves uh, that place. It's so beautiful. 
uh, the Karak Castle. I've not been there, James. Uh, everybody says it's really pretty cool. Uh, Karak is 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 um, very cool uh, from the Crusader time. A lot of history in Jordan too. I, I uh, you know got a lot of biblical history. You also have Lawrence of Arabia and uh, you know the whole post World War One history there. Uh, and, and you know Karak plays sort of a role in that too. Um, you know that separating from Saudi Arabia. It's it's very fascinating. Something. You know, we don't teach in school here in the United States. And, and then finally, we have our Holy Land uh, fam trip. Uh, that's going to follow Jordan. So you could actually, if you have a host that you're recruiting, uh, trying to get them to go to the Holy Land for the first time, you could partner them uh, with the Jordan, uh, and they could do both. So if you're, if you're a DTM and you're recruiting a host or you're a, a, a host who's trying to get one of your friends, uh, fellow pastors, uh, to go, uh, this is a way to do that, and maybe it might be an exciting trip. And uh, combine the two is pretty inexpensive, uh, so it's a great opportunity for that. Got a real special announcement I want to make to you. So all those folks who jumped off the, the webinar are going to miss this announcement. But for our Jubilee Journeys, uh, which uh, is in uh, January of 24, uh, we are doing a special uh, if you book 10 guests uh, by December the 31st of 2022, uh, so that's this year, uh, you'll receive $500 future travel vouchers uh, in addition to what did you would normally get. So if you uh, are starting recruiting for our Jubilee journey for our experience there, our big celebration in Jerusalem in January of 24, uh, we hope this will be a little bit of an incentive for you to start doing it now uh, because this will, will pass. So uh, look at that. Uh, start booking your trip there, recruiting your guests uh, to travel with us because we're hoping to have a great big celebration uh, in January of 24 uh, there in the Holy Land. Uh, our next webinar will be on June 9th. Uh, Oberammergau will be in full swing. Uh, we'll have had our first groups have gone and returned by then. So look forward to having you uh, on the webinar with us that day. Uh, on June 9th, you'll be getting more information about that. We have one last trailer we want to show you. We're going to end with this uh, with our Luxor trailer. So, so watch about Luxor. We'll see everybody uh, on June 9th. Peace.